Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and today we're going to talk about how we can auto-number records inside of SmartSuite. Well, why would we choose to auto-number or create auto-sequences of numbers inside of our solutions? It used to be in older generations of software that you'd really have to search by a unique identifier for a record. You wouldn't be able to search by a contact's name or an email address. You'd have to find the customer ID and be able to search for it that way. But with tools like SmartSuite, SmartSuite has their power search, which is really flexible to search in a particular solution or across all solutions. We could search for an individual by their name or by their email address, lots of different ways to be able to search. It's really less necessary for most kinds of records to have an auto number associated with it. But that being said, there's still some times where we want to be able to have that auto number. And typically it's for things like invoices or for tickets for an IT service help desk or for customer support. And the reason for that is because you're creating a number of records. And so it's not easy just to search by a certain string because it might be hard to remember, you know, maybe a customer opened five different cases on the same day. Well, without having a unique identifier, how can you validate with the customer that you're talking about the same thing. Same thing with invoices. In a high volume business, you can't simply just reference the amount that you're invoicing a customer. You'll want to know that actual invoice ID. So those are a couple reasons that we might want to have auto number generation for a particular record type. I'm inside of our support tickets solution template, or I should say I created a solution from the solution template. And some of these solutions already have the auto number field configured. In this case, this particular one is called ticket ID, which makes sense because we have support tickets and we want to number them a certain way. But this isn't restricted to certain types of apps. In fact, an app like companies where you wouldn't necessarily have an auto generated number associated with it. If you go to fields to display, and I should say that this is configurable if you're a solution manager. So make sure that you've got solution manager permissions but you'd be able to actually configure this. And in this case, we're looking for the auto number field. That's what it's titled out of the box, but you'll find in some solution templates that we have it titled like ticket ID or a different kind of ID. So really any kind of app that we want to enable an auto number for, we certainly can. And you'll see that it just auto numbers it by default. You don't have to do anything to configure that. It's automatically assigning it. Now, I should say that if you were to delete a record in here, let's go ahead and uh, choose a record to delete, that this is not going to affect the numbering of the rest of the system. It doesn't shift them up. If we create a new record, it doesn't fill in the gap. It keeps going from where it is. And that's usually a best practice when it comes to auto numbering because you don't want something to replace it inadvertently and have two customers refer to the same invoice ID if one got disposed of. So that's a best practice. I wouldn't worry about, oh, there's a, a missing number out of sequence there if you choose to delete a record. Let's go to our tickets here and we've got our ticket ID. I'm just gonna move this uh, to the center so it's a little bit easier to see. And we've got the ability, again, if you're that solution manager to modify the field settings associated with this. Now, this is an auto number type of field. You can only have one auto number field per app. So for that record type, so we couldn't have a ticket ID and then create another uh, auto number field over here. You're not going to see it listed in your different types of fields that you can create. And you'll notice that you've got some different options to configure in terms of you could have a starting number where it starts. This one is starting with one, but you could change that um, to 10, in fact. So we'll start with one. You can also configure the number of leading zeros that are in front of that record you'll see that that updates here as well. And then you can add prefixes to it. In the solution template, they use tick for ticket, but we're automation helpers. So maybe we would have AH as our format to lead with it. Maybe you have an IT service help desk, which is for internal service tickets that you're doing. And then you also have customer support tickets and you have that in a different solution and a different. So maybe you'd have, you know, AH hyphen IT hyphen. So you can get pretty creative with how you want to set up the prefixes and the suffixes. You could add something at the end as well. You could add a CRM here to be able to add to the end. 
The other cool part that you can do is that this actually takes the same kind of templating language for dates. So if we want to do AH, and then we could put in the year. We've got to do that in curly braces. Notice how that's got 2023 up there. It automatically formats that. It could do the two-year format if we wanted to. It could do month. We could do day. You can use these in different kinds of sequences. So you have a lot of variation in terms of what you can do. That's especially nice if you're doing something like invoices and you want to kind of be able to spot check it and see what that format is or when you actually invoice the client. Now, I will say there is a limit that I've experienced of 20 characters. And by 20 characters, I don't mean what's actually rendered as 20 characters. I mean, down in the configurator down here, we've got 20 character limit here and 20 character limit in the suffix as well. Not a huge deal, except if you're doing the four-year date format and you're adding a bunch of hyphens, you know, depending on, it might get a little bit lengthy and unwieldy, but typically you don't want these to be super long anyways. So you've got lots of flexibility in terms of how you might want to format that. If I decided, you know, before it was tick to lead it, uh, and now I'm having the AH for automation helpers, and I update that field, this is kind of cool because it's really storing that base number. It already kept it. It didn't reshift this around. It just added my prefix to it. This is really nice because a lot of other systems I've seen, it actually kind of deletes all the data and you have to start all over again, or it only takes the new subset of tickets after editing it and treats it with that. But because this is stored kind of separately, you could change the prefix or the suffix later on after you already have hundreds or thousands of records, and that's not going to mess with anything. It's still going to keep the integrity of that ticket ID itself. Now, if you are looking for where does that ticket ID or the auto number show up in the record, Again, remember, you can only have one of them. And so it goes to kind of a special spot inside of the record header. So if we open up a record, instead of seeing it as a field down here, you're going to see that ID up at the top. And that has a hyperlink to the record itself. Now, the last thing I'll say about this is that the system doesn't really care where the data is created to be able to auto number it. And what I mean is you could have a form entry that creates a record in here. It's going to be auto numbered the same. You could have a user manually enter the record, going to be the same. You could have a CSV file imported, or you could use Make or Zapier to create a, a record automatically. It's going to be the same kind of thing. And, and that's good. That's best practice. It doesn't matter how our records are created. As long as a record's created inside that app, it's going to create that ID for it. I hope this was helpful to see how we can use auto numbers to be able to make it easier to track certain records like cases, tickets, invoices, things of that nature. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear about it down below. And just a reminder that we're offering a free 30-minute consultation if you need any help in setting up your smart suite.